The governor nominated former Senator O.C. Richards to serve on the Government Employees Retirement System Board. MAP appointed Department of Labor Commissioner-designee Catherine Hendry, director of the VI Lottery Commission-designee Juan Figueroa Sr., and Chief Economist Fiscal Policy Advisor Dr. Simon Jones Hendrickson to serve on the Board of Directors for the Economic Development Authority. The PFA Board voted to appoint Johan Clendenen, Gordon Ackley, and Keith O'Neill Jr. to serve on the Board of Directors of the VI Next Generation Network. The Committee on Government Services, Veterans and Consumer Affairs, chaired by Senator Justin Harrigan, convened at the Earl B. Otley Legislative Hall on Wednesday to consider several nominations. The purpose of the hearing, he said, is to receive, was to receive testimony on the status of operations of the Office of Veterans Affairs, the Department of Licensing and Consumers, and the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. Commissioner designees appointed or nominated by the governor provided updates on their respective departments of jurisdiction. Senators also received testimony from Devin Carrington, Esquire, Commissioner designee for the Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs, Lawrence Olive, Director designee for the Bureau of Motor Vehicles, also shared testimony. Governor Kenneth E. Mapp welcomed members of the Downtown Revitalization Inc. The group made a presentation to the governor, senior staff, and other officials at Government House in Shaldamali on Tuesday. DRI started as a series of conversations and then informal meetings between residents, landowners, and business owners in the Shaldamali area in August of 2009. DRI has facilitated many meetings between the public sector and the private sector and residents concerning public projects and operations within the town area. The governor encouraged the members of DRI to continue their efforts with the support of Government House. Residents considering careers in medicine and the military took part in a medical career symposium hosted by the National Guard on Thursday. Officers from the Medical Detachment Unit and the Recruiting and Retention Unit fielded questions from potential candidates. They also provided information about range of opportunities for medical professionals. We are a very diverse branch. Uh, we have administrators, we have personnelists, we have doctors, dentists, nurses, uh, mental health officers. Um, in fact, we swore in one of our mental health officers today, um, our brand new second Lieutenant Jones, who's going to be our behavioral health science officer for the Virgin Islands National Guard. Um, so we have a lot of different diverse career fields across the Army Medical Department. So we really want to share that with them so they can see what we have available. Effective April 1st, the Virgin Islands Department of Health will be enforcing the requirement for providers to report reportable diseases to the department due to the successful implementation of the National Electronic Disease Surveillance System by the VI Department of Health Epidemiology Division. NEDS-based system, a Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Developed Information System, is used to help reporting jurisdictions manage reportable disease data and send notifiable diseases data to CDC using public health information network standards. Today, 46 states, New York City and Washington, D.C. included, use a NEDS-compatible system. In other news, officers were dispatched to a St. Croix residence at roughly 4.30 p.m. on February 15th to investigate a reported rape incident. The victim, a minor, in the presence of her father, told the officers that she'd skipped school on the 11th of February and got a ride to her boyfriend's apartment in mutual homes. The boyfriend took her to the apartment of his friend, of a friend of his, where he and two others took turns physically assaulting her. Detectives with the Investigation Bureau continue to investigate the occurrence. Also on February 18th, officers of the VIPD Warrant Unit executed an arrest warrant for Bernita Plummer, charged with embezzlement, obtaining money by false pretenses and grand larceny. Plummer, 33 years of age of Anna's retreat, was employed by Southern Rent-to-Own, failed to make 28 daily deposits totaling $28,853. Plummer was remanded to the Bureau of Corrections and was later released by the court after placing a $25,000 unsecured bond. 
On February 18th, Kenson Jolly, 25 years old, of Estate Pastory Gardens, St. John, was arrested on first-degree assault charges. Officers were dispatched to Cruise Bay at 9.21 p.m. in reference to a report of a stabbing incident. Officers discovered Rupert Walters, the victim, bleeding from multiple stab wounds. Minutes later, after searching the surrounding area, officers say they encountered Kenson Jolly, who matched the description of the suspect covered in blood. Jolly was detained and placed under arrest after being positively identified by a witness. Bail for Jolly was set at $110,000. 34-year-old Michael Velez was arraigned today after a federal grand jury returned a two-count indictment charging him with manufacture of marijuana and possession of marijuana with intent to distribute. The court released Velez on a $25,000 unsecured bond. The two-count indictment is a result of investigative work by Joint Local Federal Task Force comprising of the DEA and the VIPD. The charges stem from a search warrant that was executed at 4-0 Catherine's Rest St. Croix on January 29th. If convicted, Velez faces a maximum sentence of up to five years in prison for each of the two counts. A community crime townhouse meeting is underway as we reported. It began at 5 p.m. and continues until 8 p.m. tonight at the Paradise Covenant Ministry in Vitraco Mall next to the laundromat. It's presented by One Voice. Church leaders want to hear from you regarding the shootings, murders, and unsolved crimes. Again, it continues until 8 p.m. Turning our attention overseas, the White House is wrapping up its three-day summit on countering violent extremism, urging with a simple message, it's going to take a global approach to defeat groups such as ISIS and Al-Qaeda. President Obama is appealing to the international community to do more to counter extreme ideologies, drawing people to terrorist groups. Some 20,000 people from around the world have flocked to Syria to join ISIS and other extremist groups. Keeping our eye on the economy, a new AP GFK poll finds that most Americans support raising the minimum wage and requiring employers to provide workers at least a few paid sick days. And speaking of jobs, fewer Americans signed up for unemployment benefits last week, the latest sign of an improving job market. Here's the New York Stock Exchange with the Stock Market Watch, the Dow down 44, Nasdaq up 18, S&P down at 2. Coming up on News 2, time for our Black History Quiz. She made her fortune by developing and marketing a successful line of beauty and hair products for black women under the company she founded. Who are we talking about? The answer is coming up next. Time for our moment in black history. We remember Sarah Breedlove, known as Madam C.J. Walker, in our black history moment. Walker was an African-American entrepreneur and philanthropist, regarded as the first female self-made millionaire in America. She made her fortune by developing and marketing a successful line of beauty and hair products for black women under the company she founded, the Madam C.J. Walker Manufacturing Company. In 1910, Walker moved to Indianapolis, where she established her headquarters and built a factory. She began to teach and train other black women in order to help them build their own businesses. After the East St. Louis race riot, she joined leaders of the NAACP in their efforts. Madame Walker was inducted into the Junior Achievement U.S. Business Hall of Fame, the National Women's Hall of Fame in Seneca Falls, New York, and the National Cosmetology Hall of Fame, and that is just to name a few. The Virgin Islands National Guard is hosting events in observance of Black History Month. Today, a presentation at the Brigadier General Gerard James Senior Joint Force Headquarters Drill Hall was held. Samuel Topp, a broadcast journalist and Virgin Islands resident, shared with guardsmen his experiences growing up in a segregated South during the Civil Rights Movement and other notable accomplishment, accomplishments in that era. Now on Friday, February 20th at 4 p.m., the Equal Employment Opportunity Office and Competitive Events will host the Ving's Amazing Race, which is a follow-up to the MLK 5K that was held on January in January on the estate Bethlehem Military Compound in St. Croix. 
Well, a four-member team from Good Hope Country Day School took the top honors at the St. Croix District Math Counts Thursday. Now, those students will be joined by six other finalists from Elena Christian and John H. Woodson Junior High Schools, as well as Church of God Academy and Good Hope Country Day next month when they participate in the territorial competition. The mathletes battle through several rounds of problems to see who would represent St. Croix. The kind of questions these kids are up against are a myriad of algebra, geometry, linear algebra, statistics. I mean, it's a lot of brain, and not brain teasers, but a lot of thinking, critical thinking goes into it. And um, these are the creme of the creme from their school. Meanwhile, St. Thomas St. John Mathletes tackled mathematical equations and problems that began at 8.30 at UVI St. Thomas. About 36 students from four schools competed, including Adelita Cancrine and BCB Junior High Schools, Peter Gruber International Academy, and Antilles School. Teachers and students have been preparing for the competition since the fall. Students will compete individually and as teams, and they competed with written and fast-paced oral matches. The subjects included algebra, probability, statistics, and geometry. And according to mathematics coordinators Juanita Bonique on St. Croix and Ludens Romney in the St. Thomas St. John School District, the winners will receive prizes and will advance again to the state Mad Counts finals, and that's scheduled for Thursday, March 26, 2015, on St. Thomas. Time for our Caribbean Roundup. Outgoing Prime Minister Dr. Denzel Douglas Tuesday said he would forever cherish the opportunity given to lead St. Kitts Nevis. Following Monday's general election, Dr. Douglas, 62, failed in his attempt to lead the St. Kitts Nevis Labor Party to an unprecedented five consecutive term in power, losing to Dr. Timothy Harris. Trinidad Carnival is known as the biggest party on earth starting last week. There's been street parties, all of which culminate in a massive Carnival Tuesday parade. Trinidad's Juve drew many who danced through the streets of Port of Spain from 2 a.m. until sunrise. Well, fashion lovers, those who model and more would not want to miss a premier signature event. Coming up, it's called Model Mania. Now the winner receives an all expense paid trip to New York Fashion Week, a centerfold layout with Lifestyle Magazine and photo shoot for designers among other prizes. It's on Saturday, February 21st at MCM Center at Antilles School at 6 p.m. A portion of the proceeds will benefit the United Way. Model Man is, is an event, a high-end fashion event, combination with, um, combined with Lifestyle Magazine and Direct Music TV of New York, featuring 10 um, top, hot, young, up-and-coming models from the Virgin Islands. And they compete in different segments like casual, business, you know, uh, high fashion. And it's very competitive and have 10 unique models, different, you know, different size, all high fashion. At the United Way, we're very big about promoting education, health initiatives, education initiatives, as well as income stability initiatives, and giving our, our, our territory youth and, and just residents opportunities to be successful in life. And part of what I appreciate what he was doing with Monomany was, I have experience, I've seen this, I've done this in a very large capacity, be it New York, be it LA, I want to give back. Well, CBS TV2 as well as some channels are experiencing the effects of sun outages that are affecting our CBS programming, including in-demand services. You may experience anything from slight signal degrad degradation to complete signal loss. The outages take place yearly during late February and early March, about 5 to 10 days for about 10 minutes as the sun overpowers our satellites. The natural phenomenon occurs when the Earth satellite and the sun orbits along the same line. Some of our programs are between uh, 2.15 to 2.30. You'll be seeing that. We do apologize for the inconvenience. Be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast comes your way next. <laughs>